All right, welcome back, fellow scientists. So today, as promised, we're going to talk about physiology of the male reproductive system. Thursday, we'll talk about physiology of the female reproductive system. No real assignments for this week. On uh, Thursday, I might post a little discussion board assignment. Just one thing you learned from Tuesday, one thing you learned from Thursday, but not really, not really anything. Uh, do please take notes on this. Blank notes are, are on OneNote. Uh, and then in this video, I will be referencing other videos uh, on YouTube, and I'll put those links on LMS RenWeb. So please do take the time and go ahead and watch those. Uh, they do they go a little bit more in depth, and they have a little bit better uh, computer animation, and they can actually they can actually show the process and show the show the physiology. Um, so we're going to talk about, like I said today, physiology of the male reproductive system, uh, technically called spermatogenesis. Right? It's a most most scientific words are actually like if you break them down, they're actually descriptive biology, study of life, right? So spermatogenesis. Genesis is beginning, is making, uh, so production of sperm. A uh, typical male will produce about one million sperm per day. Uh, either those get used, right, or they just kind of kind of sit there and kind of die, right? Cells go through normal life cycles, and and then once they die, then they're kind of reabsorbed, and their and their contents, their nutrients um, are are recycled, basically. Uh, so, so spermatogenesis happens here in the in the testes, right, and specifically in the seminiferous tubules, right, which is which is right here. So if we zoom in on just one of these, because here it's it's kind of it's all kind of coiled up, and it's one tube, right? It starts here, and then it kind of goes down here, and then it goes back, but it's all kind of coiled up and bunched up and stuff like that. Um, so if we zoom in on one tube, it looks like this. The basic idea is that we start with our stem cells out here towards the outer part of the tube or the covering of the tube. Uh, and then as the stem cell uh, goes through its process of becoming a sperm and kind of matures, right, into, into mature sperm, uh, then it'll kind of move in towards the center of the tube. Uh, and then of course the center of the tube is hollow if it's a tube, right? Uh, and then that, that hollow part, then that will go towards the rete testes and then towards the epididymis and then uh, vas deferens uh, and, then, and then out. Uh, so we start here at the covering of the tube with a little cell that I've labeled A right here. So this is our this is our germline cell. This is our stem cell. Uh, this is this is kind of the beginning, right? And so from birth until puberty, uh, males will just these cells will just go through mitosis, right? Because like I said, cells have a normal life cycle. They live, they die, uh, and so this ensures this mitosis, right, is just an exact copy of the original cell. So we start with a 46 chromosome diploid cell, right? Uh, and it just ensures that, that males will have uh, enough stem cells uh, later on in life, which ensures a constant supply of stem cells. So just going through mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, all that stuff you learned back in biology uh, from birth until puberty. Then puberty hits, hormones change, uh, and then this cycle is actually kicked into gear. So then uh, one of these stem cells or a couple of these stem cells, it still goes through mitosis because we still need to keep these original stem cells. Uh, but then some of them will go through meiosis. And you guys remember meiosis 1, prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, cytokinesis, and then meiosis 2, right? Second meiotic division, right? Prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2, cytokinesis 2. Uh, and then we end up with meiosis haploid, Right, so we've cut the number of chromosomes in half from 46 to 23, uh, and that's because during fertilization, when the gametes combine, we only want a total of 46. We don't want a total of 80, 92. Right, that would be if if two diploid cells uh, fertilized each other, then that would be that would be 92 chromosomes, and that that wouldn't work. That's incompatible with life. So we need to cut the number of chromosomes in half so that when the two cells combine, then we can have the full number full number of chromosomes again. Um, so this is the first place we'll, where I'll reference a different video. So if you go uh, YouTube, like I said, I'll have I'll have the link. Uh, but if for some reason that doesn't work, human physiology, uh, reproduction, spermatogenesis, little five minute video. Uh, they do they do a lot more of talking about this whole process. They use a lot more terminology. You don't need to memorize all the terminology. Just remember the terminology that we talked about in our notes. But it is it is helpful. So please go ahead and watch that. Um, all right, so then thinking of sperm and mature sperm, uh, I just want to go over very quickly just anatomy, right, of the of the sperm. So we'll start out front here. So this is the acrosome, right? You can see here full of digestive enzymes. It helps the sperm to break through the egg. And here I'm probably 
my face is covering that. Okay, so it helps the sperm to, to break through the egg. So the egg has a uh, protective covering uh, and only one sperm can get through, only one sperm can, uh, can fertilize the egg. That's the way that God in his infinite wisdom made it. Uh, and so this acrosome helps to break through that protective covering uh, and helps whatever sperm uh, actually makes it through uh, to, to be the one. Nucleus, this is the payload. This is the most important thing. 23 chromosomes, like we said, it's haploid. Uh, mitochondria, because the, the sperm needs an energy source, it needs ATP uh, to make its flagellum swim, to make its tail uh, kind of, kind of. it actually works in kind of like a spiral motion, kind of like a corkscrew motion. Um, so that'll, that'll make this, that'll provide the energy uh, to make the, to make the sperm swim. And interestingly enough, uh, all of our, all, I think I've told you guys this before, but all of our mitochondria and all of our like endoplasmic reticulum and, and Golgi apparatus and stuff like that, all of that comes from our moms because the sperm from our dads, right, only, only delivers its 23 chromosomes. That's, that's all we get. That's all we get from dad. So uh, <laughs> I, I reference my second video now and this is this is not i mean it's kind of informative like he does a really good job uh but but this is a biologist's mother's day song uh so go ahead and play that it's 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 pretty good he's kind of talented uh maybe a little bit and uh and it's it's actually it's actually scientifically biologically uh medically accurate it's, it's pretty sweet um so anyways and if if you have a mom that's uh i know that mother's day just happened but if you have a mom that's that's more uh, scientifically or medically inclined, uh, then remember this for, for Mother's Day next year uh, and, and send this to her because it's a hoot. It's pretty good. All right. So let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Yep. Just making sure. Okay. Perfect. So now, now that we have, now that we have the sperm made, now let's talk about the journey that the sperm go through uh, to, to possibly uh, fertilize an egg. Uh, so I have here our diagram uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to reference it with numbers as I describe uh, what's going on. Uh, so number one, uh, the epididymis is right here. And it's about 20 feet long. Uh, sperm take about 20 days to go from the beginning of the epididymis, right? Or wherever, wherever it is, uh, kind of to get to the end of the epididymis to the, to the vas deferens. Uh, and all that's happening there is they're just maturing and they're kind of learning how to swim, right? I don't know what they're... <laughs> How they actually learn how to swim, whether it's trial and error, or whether something's teaching them or something like that. But anyways, uh, that's that's what the book says happens. Maturation sperm learn how to swim. Uh, number two, right, is the vas deferens. So it's this big, long tube goes up kind of through over the pelvic girdle, the pelvis pubis symphysis, uh, and that is made of smooth muscle. Uh, and again, sperm are are maturing in here, right? Not that sperm can ever be fully mature because they're male and male. Uh, but anyways, uh, during ejaculation, then the the sperm, the semen, uh, move through the vas deferens through through the process of peristalsis. Uh, during normal uh, physiology, non-ejaculation, then the sperm will just kind of swim uh, through the tube. But the tube is made of smooth muscle, and so we've talked about peristalsis before. People mainly associate it with the digestive system, but smooth muscle is it's kind of like it's a cross hatching pattern, right? So skeletal muscle is just tubes that are all kind of arranged in, in one in one orientation, right? But um, smooth muscle is arranged. You got one layer like this, and then you got another layer like this, so that the, the smooth muscle can kind of lengthen, right? And it can kind of contract like that. And so if you have, we'll use the example of a bolus of food, right? Then it contracts here, and then it lengthens here. And then as the bolus moves, then it contracts kind of at a, at a lower point, and then it lengthens here, and then it contracts a lower point, and it, it lengthens here. So vas deferens made of smooth muscle. It's just kind of like a tube, kind of like a highway. Um, dun, 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 dun. Three is the ampulla right here. So that's just kind of a holding chamber. It's a larger part of the vas deferens uh, for sperm. It doesn't, it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't really make anything. It's just kind of a location to kind of hang out. Uh, number four, Right back here is the seminal vesicle. Uh, and so what that does is that produces what's known as seminal fluid, which makes up 60% of the ejaculate, 
right? In that seminal fluid is fructose, sugar, right? Because as we talked about, the sperm have mitochondria and the mitochondria need to break down sugar to get energy. Uh, vitamin C, which helps to, helps to mature and helps to activate sperm uh, and other substances that will feed and that will activate the sperm, right? So that is the seminal vesicle, number four. Uh, and then we go to, then we talk about number five, the sperm don't actually like swim through the prostate, but the prostate is all around the ejaculatory duct, the urethra. Um, and so that produces a milky substance, a milky fluid. It, it, uh, it produces, it secretes it into the ejaculatory duct, into the, the urethra uh, that contains citric acid. Uh, and again, it helps to, helps to activate, uh, activate the sperm. Uh, and then from the prostate right here, then we have the bulbal urethral gland. And this is, this is the last thing. So right before ejaculation, this will produce like a, like a clear uh, kind of, oh, not sticky, uh, clear mucus, uh, slippery. There you go. Clear slippery mucus uh, that will actually clean the urethra. Because as we talked about, Disneyland is right next to the sewage treatment plant. Urine and semen flow through the same tube. So if semen is going to flow through this tube, uh, it needs it needs to be kind of cleaned out. It needs to be sanitized. So that's the job of the bulbal urethral gland that will secrete that mucus that that clears it out. Um, just checking my notes really quickly. Yep, sweet, got everything. Uh, all right, so let's talk really quickly about semen. What is it? What is it made of? So semen has a pH of 7.2 to 7.6. If you'll remember from uh, chemistry, that's a little bit on the basic side, right? Because neutral is seven. Uh, less than seven is acidic, and then greater than seven is basic. Uh, that protects the sperm. Uh, part of part of the the whole idea of semen is to is to feed and activate, but also protect it. So it protects the sperm from the three and a half to four uh, pH of the vagina, which is a little bit a little bit more acidic, right? Um, dun -dun 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 -dun. With each ejaculate, there's about two to five milliliters produced. Each milliliter contains about 50 to 150 million sperm, and you'll see different estimates uh, all over. I think actually in the first video that I referenced, they said it's like up to 500 million sperm. But if you do the math, it can be anywhere between 100 and 750 million sperm uh, per ejaculate. Uh, and I think, yep, sweet, that's it. So now as the bridge uh, to the female uh, reproductive physiology, uh, the last video that I'm going to reference, uh, go ahead and watch the video titled Fertilization by Nucleus, Nucleus uh, Medical Media. And this will be kind of the bridge between uh, male reproduction or male uh, reproductive physiology and female reproductive uh, physiology. Like I said, Thursday, we'll talk about female reproductive physiology, which will go a little bit more in depth. Because uh, as you may have noticed from the anatomy, females are are slightly more complicated, right? There are more diagrams, uh, there are more there are more quiz questions, right? We'll take a little bit longer time uh, on Thursday talking about female reproductive physiology. Uh, so yeah, so you can look forward to that. Hopefully, this has been uh, entertaining and informative. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the flip side.